All right, might as well go ahead and get started. I have a few things to cover today. Uh, first, just wanted to give everybody the rundown on what's going on with uh, viewer releases and currently active viewers. Um, our most likely next promotion would be the uh, the PBR Mate 2 release, which has uh, a bunch of bug fixes related to the uh, to the GLTF graphics. Um, that is Hopefully going to go out next week. See see how that all goes, but uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I'm hoping that one won't be too much longer. Uh, we also have the featurettes branch, which is more uh, uh, more follow-on work to um, PBR. In, in that case, that includes some new feature work, including uh, support for mirrors, support for uh, improved terrain. The, the uh, PBR-based terrain uh, and uh, some other other things we have in the pipeline. There, uh, we're hoping to get that out as an RC by end of the month. Um, but uh, you know how it goes with dates; we can't uh, can't guarantee it till it's there. Uh, let's see other things. We have a bunch of mate releases going on. Um, unusual pipeline that will get uh, that will get released as uh, as we decide they're ready to go. Uh, and we have an announcement. I wanted to uh, hand things over to uh, Roxy to talk about an exciting new development we have in the viewer coming uh, hopefully hopefully fairly soon. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me. Um, I'm Roxy Linden, and I'm one of the actual server developers, um, but I've actually been playing in viewer land as well lately, um, working on a new feature called WebRTC Voice. Uh, it's a new voice system meant to, you know, move into the future from VVox and uh, is based on the standard WebRTC protocol. Uh, WebRTC is web real-time communication. It's uh, built into pretty much every browser out there, and it's often used for um, things like Google Meets and so on. It allows uh, communication via video, data, and audio. Um, in our case, that's the uh, fancy part. Um, WebRTC provides a number of features that uh, bring us uh, more into the contemporary world. Um, has uh, automatic echo, echo cancellation, better uh, automatic gain control, and uh, noise cancellation as well, a little bit beyond what we currently have. So uh, that gives us a better voice quality. It also allows us to adjust the uh, sampling rate of the audio to you know a much higher rate, so we get better audio quality that way too. Um, so we've been working on this for some time now uh, and on uh, voice spatialization and uh, you know peer-to-peer uh, -peer ad hoc and group voice uh, for WebRTC and uh, we're happy to uh, you know release it to you. Um, we're we're uh, Hoping uh, we can uh, convince you to move into the future with us with this uh, fancy WebRTC technology. Um, anyway, let me uh, quick read over some of the other good stuff we have. So uh, we have. You know, it handles all the standard features we currently have, like uh, parcel voice, region voice, peer-to-peer, uh, peer -to -peer ad hoc, and group with the uh, mutes and kick and, and all that. Um, our viewer currently also handles VVox voice. So we've uh, worked on a uh, transition process from VBOX to WebRTC that's meant to be as painless as possible. So it depends on the region settings. 
uh, some regions will be marked as VVOX, some can be marked as WebRTC, and uh, you know we will roll out more and more regions to WebRTC as we uh, move along. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer voice is actually going through, it's bouncing off of one of our, our servers. So uh, it does not release IP addresses. Uh, we, we actually took that into account. Um, the the uh, WebRTC voice system we have, the servers, and so on, it gives us more control over the security. So we actually have the ability to keep people from eavesdropping in uh, voice channels and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it does improve the security a fair bit. Um, everything's encrypted. Um, you know, um, this also opens us up to new features. It makes it easier for us to develop new audio features, new voice features. So um, hopefully we can provide some good stuff in the future once we get this deployed. Uh, that's kind of the overview. Uh, I'm glad to answer any questions you have about this. Okay, is it ready now? Uh, we actually do have uh, test viewers, and we have some test regions on a DD. Um, so, you know, I, I'm glad to. Uh, we we've actually have some a wiki page that uh, we'll pass out that has links to the test viewers and to the test regions, so you can try it yourself. Um, I do have some documentation I've been working on about how we talk to the server, how the viewers talk to the server. Um, you know, the API we have, the caps we have um, for doing this. Um, and we also have source. So there will be a branch released probably on Monday uh, that'll be public. Uh, that uh, should give you an overview of how we talk to it as well. There are some complexities with, uh, you know, things like cross-region voice. I'm sure you're aware of the complexities with ad hoc and group voice and how that integrates with the multi-agent chat system. Um, you know, we do a little bit, we do something a little bit different with peer-to-peer uh, -peer voice than VBOX does. So there are some complexities there that we'd have to move on. Um, yeah, I'll look into setting up an Echo Canyon type thing. That that would be nice. I think I can do that. Okay, so I'm going back through questions. Uh, so a new server process is expected by the viewer. Um, if you mean uh, an equivalent to SL Voice, we do not have an equivalent to SL Voice. This uses a WebRTC library that's linked directly into the viewer. Um, so there, you know, there will be some work to do to do that. So we are providing that library, the WebRTC library, and the wrappers around it to integrate it with the viewer. Um, A VBOX, VBOX will still work on VBOX regions if the uh, users haven't updated the viewer. It, once a region is marked as WebRDC, that's what it talks. And so VBOX um, viewers, the older viewers, will not have voice once it's been switched over. So we want to uh, work with you to get a rollout plan that works well with that. Okay, an Agni channel, I think uh, we're talking about that. Uh, we'd have to uh, decide where that's going to go and all that. But, uh, yeah, we can we can do something with that. But the initial deployment is on Aditi. 
Uh, yeah, Signal, could you go ahead and share the wiki page? There we go. And that wiki page will change to include documents. You know, as far as the API and stuff like that, I have a little bit more touch up to do on those to make them uh, pretty and more complete. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of sparse right now at eight pages. All right. That, as again, that wiki page is the, that wiki page does include a uh, links to binaries to Second Life install installers, and uh, in, indicates the uh, regions that you can uh, give it a shot on. All right. Glad to handle any more questions. Okay, yeah, the release plans, um, I'm guessing uh, Kyle will be working with you on those, right, Kyle? Can we be communicating those? Yeah, myself or Rear, we'll, we'll keep you in the loop and make sure that yeah. we don't ruin anything for your plans. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there's not any more questions, I, I do plan to make myself available for um, you know, answering questions in the future and uh, you know, fixing bugs and all. Um, yeah, the new voice system actually uses the native WebRTC C++ developed uh, library, not uh, CEF. Uh, I looked into that and that got a little bit complicated. Not that, not that the uh, WebRTC stuff isn't complicated, but we've done some work to produce a wrapper around WebRTC and DLL, you know, a shared library that kind of should help. Okay. Well, thanks, Roxy. I, uh, you know, we're we're open for more questions about voice and open for other questions about uh, development work in general. Um, you know, to to be clear, we don't have a definite, uh, you know, switchover date at this point. At at some point, we're going to throw a switch, and basically all the regions are going to be on the new system. At which point, everybody's going to need to be running an updated viewer, but. Uh, uh, we're going to be working closely with the TPVs on deciding when that date is going to be. So, uh, you know, if you have uh, if you have thoughts um, on your schedule, uh, talk with us about that. I know that uh, in the case of Firestorm, there's concerns about getting the uh, PBR stuff out first, which uh, obviously is also a big, uh, big chunk of uh, work and a big change. Uh, question about this based on mesh support 2K textures. Uh, no, the the work of Unix so far on 2K textures uh, uh, does not include any changes to the bake service. Um, so, and as uh, far as I know, the the resolution limits on the textures that feed into the bake service would uh, would not be changing initially. Uh, obviously, that's something that would make sense to look at at some point. We haven't really done a, any update to the bake service in quite a while, so it's uh, it's lagging a bit. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to get PBR support in general in there as well, which uh, we'll you know try to get on the roadmap.
How would PBR work with the big service? Well, that is a big part of the question. We've had uh, uh, everybody uh, immediately says, oh, hey, we should be able to layer PBR just like we can layer textures. But, I mean, the, the layering we're doing today with the big service is pretty simple-minded. It's basically just slapping diffuse layers on top of each other. Um, and there's a lot more complexity in the behavior of the the uh, PBR uh, material. So, uh, you know, what's, if we got to the point where we could support, uh, you know, using a PBR material as part of a wearable, say, then there's a well-defined ordering, but it's not it's not precisely defined what all the how the compositing works for that. Um, so, you know, to, to the extent that we can, we want to try to leverage existing standards, um, you know, with GLTF. And uh, so we'd be doing do some digging into that to see if there's anything we can uh, build on there. Uh, question about how PBR for land works. Uh, Cosmic, are you here? Do you want to talk about that? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, just PBR layers, uh, is the main aspect of it. Um, However, on sufficiently high-end machines, uh, there is also triplanar mapping enabled, which improve, improves repeats for steep slopes. The uh, default terrain repeats for PBR terrain is also different uh, to help avoid uh, seams at region boundaries. Um, but that's about it at the moment. Does that answer your question? Uh, the implementation of PBR terrain is currently uh, mostly server side, sorry, mostly client side, uh, with the exception of the feature flag, uh, which the server helps mediate. Uh, it is piggybacking on top of the existing place where the texture IDs are stored. Uh, this does mean that you have a choice between texture and PBR. There is no fallback, um, but it also means it's much simpler for us to uh, implement. Um, so uh, if so, if there are uh, terrain textures, then it'll it'll load those. Otherwise, it'll load the materials. Set the max mitmap level for a material. So this would be set as part of 
uh, say a a GLTF material rather than being set kind of per per client. It sounds like maybe something set on the object level or the face level. Uh, maybe so. There should be some client side controls as well uh, for the textures so that, um, you know, if you're running with kind of lower graphics quality settings or if you uh, just want to be able to, uh, you know, constrain the, the resolution of your textures, there, uh, there will be ways to uh, kind of force an upper limit for a given uh, viewer session. Uh, whether we'd have a way to override it at the uh, kind of at the source level um, that would apply to everybody, I don't think we've really talked about that yet, um, but it's something that we uh, it's something that we can discuss. Regarding the uh, uh, lack of the fallback, uh, there are currently no plans to uh, change the main, mainland terrain. Uh, so, so this is going to be a feature for a, for estate estate owners. They can decide to use it or not. Um, and uh, yeah, that's 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 not planned. So we're we're certainly aware of a limited adoption rate. But yeah, that's still an open question for sure. So our current terrain system lets you set four different uh, textures as as texture IDs. Um, with the new system, you can set four four PBR materials instead, if you want to. Does it handle the mixed case if like two you got two textures and two materials? Or is it um, get... In that case, I'm pretty sure it should only do one or the other. Um, I, I believe that textures are the default. If if there's mixed textures and materials, um, and one texture is loaded, it's gonna say, "Okay, this is texture train." Whereas if if it loads one or more materials, then it says, "This is probably material terrain." So there is a bit of heur heuristics to that. Uh, Coffee asks, what happens if you have a reflection probe inside a reflection probe? I don't know that. Or anybody on the uh, GLTF effort who can comment? I'm pretty sure Brad said don't do that. <laughs> I would guess. Um, I mean, hopefully it won't crash if you do that. Um. I th I don't know the details of how it how the scene picks which uh, reflection probes exactly are relevant to be applied to the to the lighting for a particular surface. I, I think it I think it might possibly be okay, but I I don't know that we've designed it explicitly for that. Um, it's a good question. 
I think it's based on proximity, but uh, don't quote me on that. Yeah, it definitely blends the results of probes when it when it thinks it's appropriate to do so. Um, I'm I'm sure I'm sure you could get bad results in some cases doing this, uh, and you know, don't do that. <laughs> uh, move your probes so you get good results. Um, would be would be my answer. Yeah, so you're, are you talking about a case where you have an indoor probe, but the object, and the object is t entirely within that probe's volume, but you're still seeing results from blending from, from outdoor probes that you don't think should be relevant to that object? It's tricky. There is for a case like that.
Oh, the mouse look one is fun. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I have a, a uh, I almost said Jira, if, if I have an issue for that or not, uh, but it would be good to get one. Emojis in display names. Uh, it depends on how display names are stored. I know we had a question about emojis in a uh, description field of inventory items, and I think the answer in that case was that this wasn't stored in uh, Unicode compatible format. In the case of display names, I'm not positive. They are Unicode already? Okay. Uh, Beck, how does your monochrome thing work? Is that a global setting that says show everything as monochrome, or is there finer slicing than that?
We have had some questions about uh, multi-character emoji sequences where you, you know, start with an emoji and add a color, or you start with an emoji and add a uh, add a country code and you get the flag or something like that. There's there's all these different combos. Um, currently, we don't support any of that stuff, although it's uh, pretty likely that we'll uh, get to it at some point. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, send along any contributions for that, we would be more than happy to take a look at them. I can answer the question about the um, mesh impact, which is that um, it's not like a carte blanche um, discount on all mesh, but it will impact a lot of mesh. It's But it's specifically download a weight. So there's a lot of things that impact the calculation for mesh's land impact. One of the most common is its uh, so-called like download weight, which is used. Um, the algorithm is basically whichever parameter is most expensive defines the land impact. Um, so you should see should see the land impact on a lot of existing content go down, yeah, but not necessarily all of it. And there's a, you know, this doesn't impact, impact Animesh. So there's some, some, some details that are important to understand there. Uh, Animesh is un untouched, Animats. Yeah, Animesh has its own completely separate formula and is probably due for reconsideration. But yeah, maybe a little too aggressive on that one. I think that change is in Hearts and Flowers. Which writer? What is the? Um, sorry, which which channel is that deployed out to currently? 
uh, on a TV that is on uh, on the data grid that's that's on uh, Dirt Sim uh, five seven four and on Rider's Test Channel. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to test it out on a DD, it's available. Yeah. The 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 plan pending QA is for Blue Steel next week. More attachments in general. So, are you actually running up against the overall attachment limit for your for your avatar? I'm always curious about the use cases for that because we've gotten you know we've gotten some requests for that over the years, but when we've looked at it. Uh, you know, the fraction of people who are pushing the limits tends to be pretty low. So, I, you know, I think they're trying to do something that's that's kind of different one way or another.
Beck, you're saying everything used to have a limit and doesn't now. I I thought we always had a problem with avatar complexity being uh, kind of unaccounted for. Admittedly, with mesh avatars, it's a uh, it's a bit different from the original scene. Yeah, back in the day, I heard people complaining about sculpties. I think not, uh, not mesh. How would that work, Signal? You'd say once there's too much complexity in a region, you just don't let more avatars come in, or you don't let people uh, add more stuff onto it? Yeah, I mean, so it would be a tool for you know landowners, whether on a region or parcel basis, to restrict complexity um, on a on an av per avatar basis. So if you're if an avatar is more complex than X, then they would not be able to enter the land and they would get some type of meaningful, friendly message. I don't mean necessarily the same complexity value that we have in the viewer right now, but it could be something, a new, you know, new value. Yeah, getting a better metric for uh, complexity is, is clearly something that we've needed and have spent uh, some time on already, but... To yeah, that's a visit it. Right, it's a, it's it's a great question, Coffee. I think that would need to be approached carefully. Maybe it could provide some suggestions, like these objects on your avatar have higher complexity than others, or yeah, could could avoid the whole complexity word and actually just be more specific. You know, these models have a lot of geometry, that type of thing.
Yeah, and I mean, it's, I, I'm sure it's probably been talked about before, but Sansar had that baking and hidden geometry uh, re removal process. It gets more complicated with Second Life avatars because scripts can do things like control the opacity and of objects and change the color and whatnot. Or, you know, even just move things around the avatar. I wonder if it would be useful if you were doing a hidden geometry pass. I wonder if it would be, there'd still be a lot of utility there. Even with dynamic content, if you limit it to just static mesh and things without scripts. Yeah, our imposters are two dimensional and generated a client side. And they still require all of the avatar's content to be <laughs> right. RAM to actually yeah, run so in the first place. It. They're still, I mean, they're, they're great and useful in large crowd scenes, but, you know, if we were to generate a simplified model uh, server side, you just have to download that. How much do attachments affect the sim? Yeah, you know, mostly not that much. Most of the load is on the, the viewers for that sort of thing. Sorry, folks. I'm going to have to run off to the next meeting, so uh, I have to wrap it up for now. But, uh, you know, it's a, a good topic and obviously something that uh, we've talked about before. Kick it around at the next content creators, if you like. Uh, let's see. Other than that, uh, let us know about your experience with the, the WebRTC voice. And, uh, you know, very excited to continue working on that, and we'll keep you in the loop.